Have you heard the following acronyms? DMC, DSMB, DSMC, IDMC, and wondered what they stand for? Have you ever wondered what's the difference between an IDMC and a DMC? Or if you need one of these committees for your study and how you would go about forming that? Today we're going to provide you with the information that can help you answer these questions. These acronyms are all different terms used to describe essentially the same thing. An independent group of experts who monitor patient safety and may also monitor treatment efficacy data while a clinical trial is ongoing. This group then advises the sponsor regarding the continuing safety of trial subjects and those yet to be recruited into the trial, as well as the continuing validity and scientific merit of the trial. Here is what these acronyms mean. DMC is Data Monitoring Committee. DSMB is Data Safety Monitoring Board. DSMC is Data and Safety Monitoring Committee. And an IDMC is an Independent Data Monitoring Committee. For consistency purposes, we'll refer to this group of experts as a DMC for the rest of the discussion today. But any of these previously mentioned acronyms would be acceptable. The fundamental reasons to establish a DMC are to enhance the safety of trial participants and if you need any interim analyses of the accumulated data during the trial. When determining if you need to have a DMC, consider if your study meets any of the following criteria. Is it a large randomized multi-site study? Are there known safety concerns regarding adverse events, a specific laboratory test, or serious toxicity with the study treatment? Do you have an adaptive design with a planned interim analysis? If the study endpoint is such that a highly favorable or unfavorable result, or even a finding of futility at an interim analysis might ethically require termination of the study before the planned completion, or is the study being performed in a fragile population such as children, the elderly, pregnant women, or other vulnerable populations. If your study meets any of the items just shown, you need a DMC. However, a lot of people think you need a DMC for every study, and that is just not the case. Here are some examples of times that you would not need a DMC. If you have a trial at the early stage of the product development, or if the trial addresses an outcome such as relief of symptoms or something similar that's less concerning than mortality and morbidity. The selection of DMC members is extremely important since the DMC responsibilities relate to the safety of trial participants. The committee should be made up of a minimum of three people, including a medical doctor who specializes in the area being studied, an additional medical doctor who either specializes in clinical trials or in the area being studied, and a statistician with knowledge of statistical methods for clinical trials and sequential analysis of trial data. Farpoint recommends an odd number of voting members to ensure that the vote does not end in a tie. The committee will also usually have a non-voting statistician who serves as the unblinded DMC support statistician. You should also consider prior DMC experience when selecting your members. Prior DMC experience for the statistician is particularly important if there's only going to be one statistician serving on the DMC. Another main concern to consider when selecting your members is an evaluation of their potential conflicts of interest. These could be financial conflicts, study conduct conflicts for investigators enrolling subjects in the trial, for which their knowledge of the interim results could influence their conduct of the trial, and intellectual conflicts for individuals known to have strong views on the relative merits of the interventions under study, and as such may not be able to review the data in an objective manner. We recommend that each DMC maintains a charter that becomes the governing document for that committee. This document needs to include well-defined standard operating procedures. Per the FDA guidance, such charters are important for the same reason study protocols and analytical plans are important. They document that procedures were pre-specified and thereby reduce concerns that operations inappropriately influenced by interim data could bias the trial results and interpretation. The charter should include the following information at a minimum. Schedule and format for the meeting, information regarding who will have access to interim data and who may attend all or part of the DMC meetings, the method and timing of providing interim reports to the DMC, procedures for assessing conflict of interest, roles and responsibilities of the DMC members, and options for the DMC recommendations. Some people may tell you that you need to use a different group to run your DMC than the group that's doing your analysis. This is not true. What is required is that everything remains independent and that the unblinding information is only shared with approved personnel as stated in the charter. This can be achieved within one single organization if that organization has the necessary firewalls in place. And here at Farpoint, we have those firewalls in place. 
In fact, in the first 10 years of operations, the biostatistics team has provided independent data review committee support for over 100 different protocols, most of which involved multiple meetings. Our statisticians have served the role of both unblinded statistician and voting statistician for these meetings. If you're interested in hearing more about DMCs or need help deciding if you need a DMC, please visit us at farpoint.com.